The Sea of Ark Survival Evolved. Certainly one of the more dangerous places to visit, that you certainly wouldn't want to risk on foot. So therefore a tame is required, a creature of the seas. But which one is the best creature out there? You're right kids, it's Ras Clark and welcome to another top 10 as voted by you in my community polls here on YouTube, ranking the very best sea creatures out there. Before we begin, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, share around and let's get into it. So in at number 10 is surprisingly the Diplocorlus, the Newt, spawning on all maps bar, scorched earth and extinction and a surprising entry even at 10th place. Being relatively easy to knock out, but fleeing at the first sign of trouble, possessing no saddle and can only be mounted in water, it's extremely weak, making it slightly rare to find. So what makes this a voted entry? Well, it can be used as a portable oxygen supply at cost of its own. It's got high damage against trilobites harvesting raw meat, chitin, oil and silica pearls, and is actually pretty fast when ridden and I guess doubled up with its ease to be knocked out, it's an easy entry to get underwater without the need of a scuba tank. But that is only 10th place, so let's see what's next. In at number 9, the Plesiosaur, the Thin Plate Lizard, spawning on all maps but Scorched Earth and Extinction, and found almost always in packs and in an annoying abundance in the deep ocean, with a large and wide aggro distance only stopping if you swim too high and possesses incredibly fast torpor when KO'd, leaving you little time to tame it. Certainly a lesser version of its much stronger platform saddled friends, it does excel in speed and weight, acting as a great farming creature, or great choice for drop runs. And of course with a platform saddle allows you to build all manner of structures, and is surprisingly the only reptile that doesn't require an oxygen stat. Again, at least for me, a surprising entry with of course, bigger and better similar creatures out there. But let's move on to number 8, and a very surprising entry, the Sea Lacanth, but with a valid reason, and of course one of the few creatures spawning on all maps. It's Ark's generic, docile, low health go-to fish, which can now be tamed with the introduction of fish baskets. But why is it so important? Beyond them being your go-to source for raw fish meat, it yields silica and black pearls when harvested by an otter, but above all else, blueprints. When fished with of course a fishing rod and bait, can offer you some of the best rewards in the game, ranging through a variety of weapon, armour and saddle blueprints. The weight of the fish caught and quality of rod, best farmed via an Alpha Tuzo, can determine the loot offered, always using honey as bait if fishing for the largest weights. And of course now is a requirement to tame the Shadow Mane, fed passively through fish baskets, with weight determining taming affinity. I actually did a guide on this and I'll leave a link in the description. And I guess technically it is an underwater creature you're going to need in the game, but certainly not one that's going to help you when exploring the deep blue. So let's move on. In at number 7, the Sarko, the Croc, spawning on all maps bar scorched earth and extinction, and it's a great early entry for sea exploration, easily found, tamed, and boasting high health and damage stats. Maneuvering through land and water, possessing near instant stamina recovery makes it a great choice for long distance travel. And unlike most other land and water mounts, won't float to the surface when dismounted. It has a great advantage of being ignored by piranhas, however it may certainly struggle toe to toe against some of the stronger sea creatures but possesses a death roll attack against certain creatures, being able to turn sharply on land and move relatively quick in the sea. It's a great early choice for beginners and it's no surprise to see this so high in the list, being in my opinion the first opportunity to get in the sea. But there's certainly other better land slash sea creatures so let's get to them. In at number 6, the Mosasaurus, the once dubbed Giga of the Ocean, spawning on all maps bar scorched earth, extinction and aberration. And why? Because for one, it's almost as tough as a Giga to tame, and was once the prized trophy of the sea, possessing the second highest health and melee stats of the sea. Offering both platform and tech saddles, it certainly offers a range of utilities, whether it's for tanking, damaging or gathering. Though it's sadly let down by an enormous turning circle, as quoted by you and why it's in the top 10 creatures that need some TLC but certainly a contender against most other sea creatures and getting around the ocean in a relatively quick speed. In at number 5, the Carcinos, the almighty tanky crab, spawning on Aberration, Valguero, Crystal Isles, Gem Part 1 and 2, and uniquely tamed with the catapult and boulders, 
and with ease on Gen Part 2, see my guide in the description. The Karkinus, whilst our slowest choice on this list, lacking an oxygen stat, is surprisingly more mobile in the sea than it appears to be, being able to travel vertically in an infinite jump of sorts. And it's a surprising midway entry from the community as their choice to ride within the sea, perhaps picked for its fantastic weight and rarely aggroing other creatures, doubling up as a relatively inexpensive tank owed to its 0.8x damage reduction against bullets. Of course being a handy tool for farming outside of the sea, and lest we forget its ability to launch anything in the air. In at number 4, the Baryonyx, the stun locking king, spawning on all maps bar scorched earth is a fantastic aquatic battle mount, and relatively easy to tame, being both land and sea ready. It's incredibly quick on both and devastating in the water, with a dangerous tailspin attack that can dismount and stun other players, being ignored by leeches, and offers an additional 20% damage against river dwelling creatures, such as spinos and sarcos. Having both land and sea travel, as well as the ability to jump, it's viewed as the ultimate caving creature, as voted by you in that top 10, making those nasty multi-leveled artifact caves a breeze to run through. In at number 3, the Tuzo Toothis, the monstrous squid, spawning on all maps by Scorched Earth and Aberration. Whilst it's in a great spot in this list, it's hard to agree it's not deserving of the number 1 spot, owed to its ease of taming once you've got the black pearls, and then becoming your taming companion for almost all other sea creatures able to grab them and take them to a safe location, dealing torpor damage at the same time or deciding to munch them to death in the process. Its grab attack can, if willing, stretch out to land creatures also, creating a watery grey for them in no time. And its huge pull of both health and melee, combined with its reach, makes it a menacing foe in the sea for killing most other creatures, being a go-to choice for farming anything, unless we forget, passively generates oil. Despite seen to be slow, it actually moves surprisingly quick, increasing by 30% for 8 seconds when performing its smokescreen ink ability. And overall, a true apex predator of the sea. In at number 2, the Shadow Mane. Ah, the Lionfish Lion, spawning on of course now Gen 2. And certainly a heavily debated entry, ultimately being a favoured entry hitting this number 2 spot. And why? Well, I can agree, it's certainly overlooked, perhaps still being a relatively new creature to Ark, being an almighty underwater creature, tamed fittingly with fish. We all know by now the Shadow Man is a monster of a creature, being a strong choice for boss running despite it possessing no saddle. In fact, it possesses a natural armour, similar to a Reaper, but which will vary depending on the level. Coupled with its devastating bite attack, transforming into its special attack if held down for longer, instantly refilling momentum if killing its foe, dash attacking similar to a scout, but evolving into a warp attack, attacking multiple targets at once if holding down the alt attack button. And of course turning invisible, with females buffing allied creatures to turn invisible too, as well as a courageous roar for males in the presence of a female buffing allied creatures attack and resistance, and all the time passively dealing damage to anything that hits it, stacking a reduction in attack up to 5 times of that foe. But getting back to the reason why it's in this list, it possesses unparalleled mobility in the water, faster than any other creature out there, with no oxygen bar, a small overweight buoyancy control, and the ability to leap out of the water like a dolphin to incredible heights, coupled with all of its damage attacks, and don't forget the ability to hold two passengers, being able to shoot from, it's certainly a perfect choice for the sea. And before we get into number one, let's just have a special mention to the creatures that didn't just make the cut. And here it is in at number one, the Basilosaurus, the passive aggressive whale, spawning on all maps bar scorched earth, extinction and aberration. Guarded by mantas, basilos are simple enough to tame, not being aggressive, and once tamed will become your safest ride in the sea. Despite it taking damage in deeper water, marginally so it's worth noting, and being perhaps slightly slower than others on this list, it has one of the best melee stats in the sea, coupled with high health, makes it the perfect war machine. Furthermore, it can't be grabbed by a Tuzo, or shocked by jellyfish, arguably the biggest annoyances in the sea, doubling as a fantastic choice for biotoxin farming. It additionally insulates riders dramatically, removing the requirements of scuba leggings. And above all else, doubles as a fantastic oil machine, generating it and offering stacks when killed. 
coupled with its size makes it the best choice for sea caving especially, and can stand against anything in the sea when armed with a good saddle. A must have for the sea. And certainly an agreed number one spot. But what do you think? Comment below, let me know. Do you agree or do you not? And what more top 10s would you like to see from me in the future? Comment below, let me know. My name's Ross Clark, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and as always, oh, peace out. Thank you.